This is a very simple little circuit, not many components, which I'm going to publish because surprisingly you can't find designs for this everywhere. It's a very simple concept, you think these would be common as dirt, but no one seems to be selling them as pre-built modules and there aren't that many schematics you can just Google up. Well, it's a simple voltage controlled switch, it turns something on when the voltage reaches a threshold and turns it off again when the voltage reaches a second lower threshold, so it does have state. Those two transistors up there are a flip-flop that hold the state. It's supposed to be set for 13 and 12 volts, but it's a little bit of calibration at the moment. It's more 12.8 and 12.2. I'll show it in action. When that hits the upper threshold, it comes on. If it goes below that threshold, it stays on until it reaches the lower threshold, then turns off. And again, if it goes back up, it won't turn on until it reaches the upper threshold. You can see the uses for this in something like energy harvesting. You could have a very small solar panel or other low power source charge up a capacitor bank or a battery and when it's fully charged connect up your really heavy load, run it for a brief time until you're out of energy and then shut it off again let energy build up. So there are many places that could be useful. So a good one would be pumping water using a small solar panel. The panel charges for an hour and then it can run the pump for a minute, which is enough to fill up a tank. So, useful. In this case, it's actually a glorified battery discharge protection circuit to keep my lead acids from being drained after a few days of no sun. Oh, not much to it. There's a simple Zener diode that uses a voltage reference. Two potentiometers to set the thresholds. Good old LM393. Two BS170s, configured as a flip-flop, RS latch, and one F S FB4710 power MOSFET for the actual switching. In theory you could actually use the uh, power MOSFET as one of the RS latch transistors too and take the component down. I tried that, it worked great. Until I put a load on it, at which point the LM393 started spewing magic smoke out the sides. I burnt out three LM393s and still haven't figured out what's going on there. But this configuration works and look, I can even stick a nice resistor on the gate to make absolutely sure nothing's going to short and blow the chip. Oh, sorry for the uh, shaky video, but oh, I really haven't got a decent camera. I think this is a good circuit and I'm going to get it written up and give you the schematic.